What's up YouTube? Phil at the Backroads Riding Channel coming at you with today's video. I am down in Florida on Sunday, May the 17th. Beautiful Davenport area, or beautiful Orlando area, I guess. It would be greater Orlando. It is, <laughs> it is hot very hot it's about 96 degrees and I am roasting today so I'm hoping this video goes okay I have been working with a new or a new well new helmet I purchased a Shoei RF 1200 and I've had a little bit of trouble getting my GoPro mount to stay on the camera. I've got a matte finish on the helmet. It's a white American flag on one side, gray American flag on the other. And for some reason, the GoPro holders have not been holding very well. So I'm kind of hoping that today the holder actually stays on, which it has not a couple of times. So hopefully it's attached a little better this time. The bad thing is, is I forgot my safety mount for my camera. <laughs> so if it does come off, I won't be trying to catch it as it goes bouncing by me. Uh, that being said, I had to rewire the helmet and get that all set up again. So I'm hoping that the volume is better. Uh, this helmet does have less wind noise. There is still some wind noise, but it definitely is better. And I've got a lot more airflow in this. These Shoei helmets, uh, I gotta tell you, are, are nice helmets. Uh, I've been very, very, very impressed with it. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of cushioning, fits very snugly to the face. Uh, you can just tell these are nice helmets. I did go ahead and spring a little bit for the uh, transition shield which down here is very nice because I don't ride at night uh, too often, but when I do, I'd always have to flip my shield up because on my HJC helmet that I had, I only had um, just the regular uh, tinted visor. So, you know, I'd have to flip it up at night because I, I just couldn't see very well. And I don't particularly care to ride around with my visor up. I mean, I do wear glasses under my visor just in case, but I, I don't uh, typically ride that way. So uh, this is nice because it'll transition down as it gets darker. I don't start losing vision and cap or seeing ability. But uh, the helmet was pricey, uh, a little more than I really wanted to pay for a helmet at this time. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's my head. And the guy I was talking to at the motorcycle shop were looking at my helmet and <laughs> looking at my expiration date on my helmet. And he was like, oh, this is kind of like having a styrofoam cup on your head. So which I knew was true. It's The helmet was about six years past its expiration date, which is terrible. Uh, so I'm trying not to do that anymore. But I, I want to go ahead and, I, I you know, I, when I first got, I've always just bought cheap helmets, just enough to get by. And this time I wanted to buy, put a little bit more money out, buy a nicer helmet. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. So I actually have the Rogue King back. Um, I'm just under 25,000 miles, well, 24, just under 24,000 miles on the bike. I took it in for a 25,000 mile service and they came out and told me that I had a little oil leak uh, coming out of the head gasket. It wasn't bad though. And I'm like, okay, well, it's gonna be, you know, $750 or something like that to replace it. So I asked him if it'd be okay to ride on it for a little bit if I was careful, you know, didn't kill it or anything, and uh, said it should be fine. Uh, it's not leaking badly, and uh, we were going to try to get it through for the next 5,000 miles. Well, I, I took it out of the dealership, uh, rode it home that night, and then the next day I decided to go on about a 100-mile, 150-mile ride. And about halfway through that, maybe a little bit further than halfway, I all of a sudden started smelling burning oil. Initially, I thought it was a car in front of me. And then I looked down and I <laughs> I had oil all down the side of the bike, all over my headers, all over the exhaust pipe. Uh, so I stopped and looked at it and it was just, it was spraying oil all down through there. 
so I, I got it back home and uh, took it to the dealership uh, and that's a couple days after that and uh, they had it in and I uh, ended up with a blown head gasket so they tested everything out uh, the dealership actually worked with me really well on it um, I did end up taking a little bit of a chance because I just didn't want to put the money into replacing the head and they had done some checking on the the head to see what they thought they, they felt fairly confident that the head was in good shape that it wasn't warped so I went ahead and took the chance and had them put it back together with a new head gasket with the same head and so far about 200 miles into the repair uh, we're doing good so I'm hoping that it stays that way I did miss this bike because I, I really enjoy my Road King it's a nice ride but that is my second bit of news today uh, while I had this in the shop I uh, went ahead and pulled the trigger on the second bike I've been looking at getting. I've been around, going around for the last couple of months riding uh, a bunch of different bikes. And I had narrowed my search down to uh, some of the smaller bikes. I, I'm looking for a, a bike more of an around town, just kind of fun, bar hopping type bike, you know, back and forth. and Nothing for touring as the Road King fits that portion of my stable. And so uh, I've been looking at several of the Harleys I rode. I ended up settling down on a Harley uh, or an Iron 1200. I had ridden the 883. I took out the 1200, liked it. It was a little tight for me. I'm six feet tall, a little, little tight, but it was good to get back on a Sportster again. And then I also test rode the Softail Classic, which was a really nice bike. Uh, that 107 and that soft tail frame is wow it's that's super 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 nice uh but i thought you know since i'm doing all this test riding i'm gonna go try the other manufacturers as well and uh so i went ahead and test rode a indian scout and an indian scout 60 and the indian scout bobber and I got to tell you, I, I kind of fell in love with that bike. So uh, the bobber, I really like the bobber, but for me and my size, uh, well, you know, I'm six feet, 280 pounds, so I'm not the skinniest guy in the world. And uh, it was just, it was, I was pretty crunched down on it. So if I got the bobber, I was going to have to, I was going to have to swap out the handlebars right off the bat and go with a pangers. Uh, with ape hangers, I think the bike uh, could have probably worked pretty well for me. But I just didn't want to pay the extra $900 to get the handlebars replaced, you know, right off the bat. So it was down to the Scout or the Scout 60. I uh, took both of them out. The Scout obviously has got a little bit bigger engine. It's got the six-speed transmission, which was really nice. Uh, but for the deal that I got, I ended up going with the Scout 60. Uh, I, number one, I liked the black, all blacked out look. That was really nice. Uh, the Scout still has some chrome on it in different places. And uh, the Scout 60 is all blacked out. Motor looks really sharp. Now the motor is a little smaller. It's, uh, I believe it's 70, is it 74 horsepower? I'm sorry, I did not read the specs before I talked today. But uh, it's a 999cc and it's got a five-speed transmission but for around town riding and even honestly riding on the highway the bike does great uh, the only way you're really ever going to notice the difference between a scout 60 and a scout is if you ride them back to back uh, definitely on the highway at the high end you get into that six gear you got more power with the scout which is nice um, but it, you know for my purpose i was going to save two grand by going with the scout 60 so that's what i went with and uh, I'm happy with it. I like it. It's a really nice bike. I put about a thousand miles on it. I've had it for about three weeks now. And uh, it has been flawless so far. Of course, that's bike's not even broken in yet. So I'm sure we're going to get some more information on it. And I'm going to do some videos on that bike as well. But uh, it's, uh, it's really nice, especially in Florida with having the water cool motor. Uh, that's really nice to have down here because, uh, you know, you get days like today. It's hot. I mean, I'm riding on a weekend, so I don't have to worry quite as much about traffic getting jammed up in a, you know, a go to work traffic jam or whatever. Uh, so, but I mean, it's hot today. 
and uh, these bikes are the Rogue King while it does have that oil cooling on it uh, you know it, it, it heats up and so having that water cooled motor is really nice but uh, I gotta say I, I'm really happy with it this is not not giving any kind of a review on the Scout 60 yet I'll do that in one of my videos here but I just want to let you guys know what was going on so hopefully this uh, the sound was good on this video and uh, hopefully I know I keep saying this but hopefully I'll be able to start making more I am finally out riding my bike more or bikes now I guess I'm definitely riding more and uh, I've been able to put a few thousand miles on down here in Florida and I'm getting a little more comfortable with the area and the the craziness of people driving down here so look for more videos coming in the near future hopefully as long as this setup is working well for the camera we should be good to go and uh, get back to doing some regular uh, riding videos again and maybe get to show everybody some Central Florida and uh, uh, I look forward to doing that work with you so if you like the channel and you're ready to see some new stuff click subscribe down there on that lower corner click that alert button so you know what time videos come out or when they come out for all you riders stay safe keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down this is Phil at the Backroads Riding Channel saying peace and we'll see you in the next video